All right, guys, we're here in Louisville, Texas at the American Amusement Auctions. We're about to check out what's for sale today. We're going to do a full walkthrough, check out all the units, kind of talk about them, see what's wrong with them that we can see already, see what's turning on, and uh, just kind of give some advice. But yeah, we're about to jump right into it. All right, guys, so we always start with this retro line. It's one of the first things the auctioneer hits. Uh, we've got a 20th anniversary with decent looking modern. Normally you see these things burnt to all hell, so that should sell pretty well. Looks in good shape. Miss pack that hasn't turned on. Galaxian, one of the least performing games we've ever put out, but we still keep, keep them out because we love them. Uh, next to a Mario Brothers and a Donkey Kong Jr. Got a Defender. Next to it, the sequel Stargate. Next to it, a Joust that's got the, the famous rug pattern, memory error. I think I saw this up earlier, so it might be possible, pretty easy fix. Next to a 60 and one. Y'all might recognize this, a pole position two from, I think the last auction or the auction before. It's actually set up really cool, but the price on this has been really high. So I think the buyer, well, it's back in the auction. So either the buyer's bringing it back to the Tilly, they get that super premium price, or perhaps uh, someone brought it home and it was just too big. It's in great shape, it looks great. Next to a kind of haggard Miss Pack. Next to what looks like a pretty decent track and field. Versus Excite Bike in that generic uh, Donkey Kong versus cab. Uh, actually, it looks kind of nice. Oh, they just uh, blipped all the power on these. Uh, next to Gauntlet Legends that was not on. These things are really cool. We love them. Uh, got the cool 49 way joysticks. Actually, really cool monitors on those as well. Uh, you'll see a lot if you go through watch our warehouse videos. We love them. We'll see if this one turns on because we do need some parts right now uh, for to get another one up, up and running. Asteroids that I thought I saw on, but I don't know. As I say every time, I love Asteroids, one of my all-time favorites. Next to a 60 and one, next to a 60 and one. Uh, as you can see, there's the, this is a good way to see the various levels of 60 and one. So this is one that they've redone the control panel on a little bit, gave some acrylic. Uh, monitor looks okay. It's old, but it looks like it's been well taken care of. Looks like the colors are gonna be pretty good. No serious burn. Next to a big kind of washed out 25 inch uh, with a, generic dynamo overlay that hasn't been taken care of very much. I mean, it probably could have came from the same place, but this one's kind of been uh, made ready to take into someone's home. This one need quite a bit of work before you really want to put that in your home. You can see the monitor discoloration, everything like that. Simpsons with the right joysticks. You don't see them very often. The right buttons, all the Wicos. Uh, monitor's a little iffy, but looks pretty good. Right cabinet and everything. A gunfight that's kind of screened out. Uh, Star Wars with uh, what looks like the 6100. Yeah, um, not not the Amplifone, but you know, Atari Star Wars, we always end up buying them. Uh, next to the 25th anniversary, which uses pretty much the same board as the 20th. Uh, we've seen these in previous auctions with these 50 cents on the front. Uh, this was probably a buyback that's coming back maybe for its last run. Um, Next to, and this is kind of a funny piece of history, in the late 90s, first person shooters were becoming so popular on computers, uh, they started making these like first and third person shooters for arcades. Uh, you had the grid, war final assault, that kind of stuff. Um, to try to capture that, it's a cool game, it looks okay. We don't actually have one in the collection. I don't know if we really want one, but I guess we'll see how it goes. Oh, uh, here's another one of those 50 cent multicades. I feel like this has been in the last three or four auctions. Uh, this is the Donkey Kong. It's. Uh, you know, it's a good home re-release. These end up selling in the thousands, which kind of run people off. Plus, it's not the original board set, but I think it's a pretty cool presentation, pretty cool setup. Uh, an afterburner with the working force feedback. The real thing is the force feedback on these is pretty easy to keep going. It's more everything around the force feedback, the plastics and everything, because as you can see, it's pretty violent. Uh, afterburner, of course, uh, doesn't really have a great free play mode, and that's one of the reasons it's kept it off the floor. We've done, we have a couple in the collection, and we've done some special stuff. But I did, I was reading, I think earlier yesterday, they do have some free play ROM hack coming out for it. So we might be able to get one on the floor. We'll see how long it lasts if we ever do. Oh, a cool pound for pound with it. Okay, looking monitor. It almost looks like this got pulled off the floor and then just set in someone's garage forever. Got the discoloration on the track balls. It's not even move. This one doesn't even really want to move. Um, but it actually looks really nice, really cool. Uh, another Stargate, wow, that's... So we own a couple, oh, and look, this is the, the Willis overlay, I believe, for Stargate. That's kind of interesting, I've never seen that uh, in real life. It's not rare, it's just Willis made these uh, knockoff overlays back in the 80s that were less expensive than having to use the real thing. 
Um, and it, it, I, some of them came out really cool. This one, not not so much. A Badlands. Uh, wow. I honestly, I've seen Badlands before, and never in this cabinet. So I'm not really sure if I'm missing something or if this is missing something. Um, it looks like a shoes, a horseshoe game, um, and a midway cabinet. That's kind of cool and weird. Uh, Dragon's Lair 2, of course, we have one. We've had it out at uh, Arlington before. It was actually an Arlington launch game. We haven't had a lot of success with it compared to Dragon's Lair 1. Uh, they're both really difficult games. Uh, I think we need to get our Dragon's Lair 2 out. I would guess that this is running the Dexter, uh, just because laser discs have become so difficult and rare. But uh, we generally prefer the real laser discs, and all of our Dragon's Layers that we have out are still running the real laser discs. So um, it would be interesting to see when it turns off and on to see which. Uh, system it's running, if it's running that Dexter or that Laserdisc. I can't really tell offhand. That's how, and that's how good the Dexter is. A great Space Invader Deluxe. Uh, I, you know what, this looks really cool. I, I love Space Invader Deluxe. Oh, it's crashed, it's bugged. Generally an easy to work on board, easy to work on everything. Um, a Taito 10 yard fight. This might have formerly been in our collection. You can see the sweet uh, fence post kind of, uh, repair they did on there. Uh, you know what though, we haven't put it out. We had one or two, we sold them as a pair. Uh, it's actually a pretty fun game. Although sports games in general, they, especially the older ones that aren't Blitz or Jam, they struggle. Arkanoid all time, great, right in two. Uh, looks okay, I mean, it's got that monitor wave, monitor wiggle. A terrible, terrible team play version so Team Play made um, a really cool retrocade that had the uh, Missile Command and uh, Centipede and all the, the trackball games on it, along with a brand new bowling game. They also released a much worse thing with some Williams classics with Robocatron and Joust. This looks like it's been hacked to, you know, everything. You've got a LCD, and what's kind of cool here is they've got an LCD, but it's simulating the curvature of a CRT monitor. Um, that's kind of funny, but you know, not, not at all what we'd ever put in to so, our okay. Hey, a four complete. Uh, this, is the, this is the version of Golden Sea that we recommend everyone buy. Uh, this one does not have the cool header that has the digital display that was just recently hacked and now you can actually put custom messages on there, uh, which is what people have been asking for for a long time. You never know, you might see me go for this because uh, we have a couple other cabinets uh, with Golden Sea in it, just none that are four complete and we don't like to just hack and plug and play with it, so uh, cool, it might end up going for it. All right, so what do we have here? We've got a Tekken 5 cabinet. That's not Tekken 5. Running maybe a multi? Let's see if we can... It's running something weird. Uh, some sort of multi, I think. Maybe, I mean, properly installed and everything. It's displaying okay, but you can definitely tell it's uh, not, the, not the original. Double Dragon 2. Not a super requested game, but you know it does have that pedigree. Uh, let's see a final fight that's all kind of bugged out. Jurassic Park 3 uh, monitor went out, is what it says. Of course, uh, a couple auctions ago we saw one of these sell for two thousand dollars, which is too high. Uh, but it's a cool game. Maybe if it goes cheap, who knows? A Carnival King. You know, there were a lot of kind of big top style shooters early in with joysticks. And you would have thought this would have been successful. Maybe it was just the, uh, the way they introduced it as almost like a kiddie game, but uh, you would not see us buying that. It looks like a generic pedestal arcade with a terrible six button layout uh, with your fingers so far apart. Especially if you care about fighting games, you wouldn't be able to perform the kind of moves that you'd want. Stream hunting, we sometimes buy these for the monitors. These look pretty toasty, haven't seen it on. Mortal Kombat 1 in a Dynamo. It's not dedicated, so you won't see us buy it, though. I have a special place in my heart in general for Mortal Kombat 1 versus 2 and Ultimate, which came, and Ultimate 3, which came out later. And then everyone hates Mortal Kombat 4, so at least some arcade people can agree on something. House of the Dead 3, you know, we actually have one that I bought not long ago that's just sitting. This thing uses the Chihiro motherboard, which um, uh, we just haven't found very reliable. Uh, Site 4, a uh, combo, I think. No, dedicated Site 4, great looking monitor. Eh, ish. Pretty good looking monitor. A uh, Friction, one of those weird um, gun games that came out that I honestly don't really know much about. I know more about the next one, Invasion of the Abductors. Both equally terrible, but they are gun games and people love gun games. Then a Max Force and a Dynamo next to it. 
These are all any in games, these National Entertainment Network, uh, local to Dallas. Generally take good care of their games, but they put them in places like Walmarts and stuff, so they get worn pretty good. Uh, the Quick and Crash, you know, you've seen this in our warehouse. Uh, we've had it out on the floor before. We've, I've lamented how these stupid guns, uh, once the plastic breaks, it's such a hard pain to find a reproduction or to find a replacement. We've got two here. We'll definitely be interested. We tested these earlier. They're vaguely working. Not exactly mint. Definitely not ready to put on the floor. But as a parts buy, I guess we'll see how high they go. Another extreme hunting. I bet another in the end game. Um, uh, Area 51 Site 4. This is the non-dedicated. Just over there you saw the dedicated Site 4 and the Area 51 style cabinet. This is just the dynamo that they, you know, bolted on some guns. You pr I mean, unless the monitor's great, you won't see us touching those. A Tekken 3 with, oh, this was probably a Mortal Kombat con conversion first. Oh, you can even see it. There's the MK3 stuff. And then they just turned, they just covered up the middle hole and put four buttons, which means this would be extremely awkward to play, but that's kind of uh, not something you see out of operators, especially older operators. The new generation not doesn't do that as much. Sport Shooting USA, Dream Hunting. Uh, we talked about these Thomas Wave cabinets a lot. M great monitor buys and, and generally good, uh, good cabinets because they got made. They, they made so many of them, and you've got a lot of cool obscure games that came out for it that you know are not these these gun games. Uh, Neo Geo conversion pretty funny interesting button layouts we'll see if it turns on maybe if the monitor was good 19 inch though and so this is really fun uh, rev x is one of our, our favorite games we think it's really absurd really ridiculous uh, but all of ours that we put on the floor the two-player version this is the three-player version significantly more rare not necessarily better it's not really uh, a much improved play experience having three people shooting instead of two but I, just for the kind of rareness and interesting uh, layout we you might see us consider it go for it uh, MVC2 and like a, maybe that's a dirty fig skin doesn't really look like a big blue almost looks like a big blue G lock uh, fun game I think I've actually bought one or two of these just to put in the um, storage and never use a sit down dedicated G lock pretty cool um, I've never seen that before I like it I won't buy it but it's kind of cool World Series 99 dedicated so these were really cool. So this is a, um, a Naomi game. And Sega had these uh, generic Naomi cabinets that you'll see, and I think there's maybe one or two here. And then they also had some Naomi wood cabinets that they made for like uh, zombie revenge and stuff. And this, they all use the same control panel. And so Sega would make these control panels at the factory. Uh, and I actually used to have a World Series control panel. It's kind of cool because you get to swing with this, the actual bat. Uh, the downside is it's not the easiest to work on and those are pretty haggard, especially, I mean, primarily just the bat function. But it's actually a really cool gimmick, a lot like some of those uh, home run derbies that came out in the 80s, the, I think they were Leland games. Uh, all right, got another Ranger mission and a Thomas Wave cab. Big Buck Hunter in like the weirdest Big Buck cab they made. It's, I mean, almost like it was made for children, which is concerning a little bit. Uh, another two Thomas Waves, yeah, you can tell any in these are probably just a ton of any in games getting dumped. Um, finally off. Hey, I'm Madden season two. Uh, Madden is kind of the uh, stepchild to Blitz, but you know, they don't make Blitz, they make Madden still. Um, so, and this is a pretty recent release-ish. I mean, within less, what, 10 years? I don't see a copyright on it, but definitely pretty new. It's a global VR. Uh, nice looking police trainer, uh, kind of cool. Uh, it's one of my guilty pleasure games. Site 4 playing Area 51, so it probably has the double um, double game on it. Squeeze through. Silver Strike looks like uh, one of the first releases. Uh, you know, that's actually a pretty fun game. Does pretty well in bars and does okay in free play. We have one out that kind of rotates around. Uh, SF3, not Third Strike. So um, it's uh, got a valuable board set in there, but not necessarily uh, a valuable cabinet or anything. This was really cool. So I was talking about that Naomi generic, um, Naomi Universal cab. This is one, it's called Wild Riders. I've never seen this game before. Uh, but you know, that monitor looks vibrant. It looks really interesting. I bet that's gonna sell for more than it probably should just because it's so unique and interesting. Two ne pretty cool Neo Geo conversions. You can see they, uh, in their kits, they all came with the credit things. You normally see them down on the control panel or near the control panel, mounted them up there. I think it looks pretty cool. 
Um, probably a cool home use for Starcade if it goes for that 100, 200 range. A uh, Strata Bowling, I think. Um, looks cool, I think that might even be, I don't know, I don't want to mess up and say that it's dedicated, but it looks kind of dedicated. Another Miss Pack looks maybe better than all the others. Another Afterburner looks in similar condition. Uh, penalty shot ticket game where you run and kick it and it measures how hard you kick it. Not sure how it got in this row, but uh, they, they normally sell pretty well. Oh no, an SF2 CE, uh, Street Fighter 2 Champion, in a Dynamo. Uh, it's kind of a dark model. It looks kind of cool. Probably sell a lot higher than you would expect. I think that's the yeah, it's a 19 inch monitor. A little smaller form factor on these 19 inch Dynamos, but uh, also could be kind of a cool home buy. A Ghost Squad that's not on. Target Terror Gold. Um, you know, I, I kind of like this game. It's a Raw Thrills. Uh, but all my employees make fun of me for liking it, so it must not be as good as I think. Uh, 60 and 1 right here, multi cade vertically oriented, so 60. Uh, Power Drift, hey, I love Power Drift. We've done a full motion video on Power Drift, and we do have a stand up still. And you can see all the artifacting and normal stuff that happens in these games. Good, I mean, pretty vibrant monitor, lots of screen burn, but another one of those guilty ple pleasure games that doesn't do well in the arcade. And a Target Terror pedestal. So yeah, I wouldn't be too surprised if this is National Entertainment Network really liquidating a lot of their stuff because Target Terror, Extreme Hunting, those were really big any in games. Ah, uh, Blockout. So I have a full kit for Blockout somewhere. And it's like Tetris, but I, I really prefer it. And I use these cool joysticks that have the buttons on the top. Um, that are, you, you'll see in lots of different arcades. And, but Blockout was like, you can't play it without it. And they sent it with these original black ones with the red buttons on top. And it's normally really easy to find a game that's been converted from a Blockout just by those joysticks because there weren't that many games that used it. Uh, and Blockout wasn't necessarily a popular game. It's in a stern cabinet, kind of cool. Uh, a Terra Cresta. One of the, I guess, the Moon Crest of sequels. Donkey Kong, not on. Turbo Outrun, let's see, is it just working with, uh, oh, kind of a rough, rough steering wheel, not really working out it's supposed to, but, you know, Outrun's awesome. I, from talking to a bunch of Outrun guys, though, I think that the original Outrun's preferred to Turbo, although someone has made a, like a ROM hack for Outrun that is like the ultimate ROM hack, and we just started running it in our Denton location with a fully rebuilt Outrun, and the reception's been really great. Um, this is a, it looks like kind of gutted Neo Geo. What's kind of funny is they've got like a photo of it working on there for some reason, like to tell the buyer that at some point in its life it did it did work. That's funny. Uh, police trainer in an Area 51 cab, missing a lot of, oh, because it's an Area 51, they didn't have the marquee thing, so they just kind of have it taped in there. Uh, you know, kind of weird operator stuff, probably in the back of a, geez, gas station or something. Um, yeah, police trainer. MVC in a Dynamo, 19 inch monitor again. Some weird fighting games, but you know, this might be the place to sell them, given that home users probably don't know or care that much. Uh, kind of looks rough. I'll probably, say, I'll probably talk about trash about it and end up buying it when it goes for three or four hundred dollars. Um, what is this? This is a Time Crisis, these are Time Crisis 3 pedestals. Uh, but they're, that's not a Time Crisis 3 arcade, so I don't know. They've got NEN stickers on it. I don't know where NEN would have put these. Because, like I said, they normally put stuff games in like Walmarts and stuff. But I guess we'll see if they turn on uh, and see if they're running some sort of time crisis. Uh, you know this from our walkthrough. This is that terrible, sad, cut in half. It's Escape from the Planet of the Robot Monsters that was cut vertically. Um, this is actually ours. We'll see how it goes. Same with the one next to it. Uh, it's got a story. It's got a history. We're hoping someone buys either one of them and does something fun with them because we never did. Confidential Mission Cab, House of the Dead 2 marquee. Uh, they did run in the same cab on the same general hardware, so it's not that crazy. But co poor confidential mission, even in an arcade that was very difficult to convert, they still decided to run House of the Dead 2 instead. Um, I like confidential mission a lot. Ah, the treasure of the, every auction. We've got the Varum multiplays. Um, we don't know, none of these have been turned on. Uh, every Varum in the world has been hacked up. Um, and I know we've seen probably 100 or 200 come through the auctions at this point. Uh, although allegedly they had thousands of cabs out, so we'll see how it goes. Dynamo cut corner, wide 25 inch with a 19 inch monitor in it for some reason. Data East with a cool curved marquee, you know, like your Robocop generally, with a, just a computer monitor inside. And then yeah, just more and more midway pack cabs, Dynamo cut corner, another Data East. Uh, we don't know what these are yet, so we'll see when they turn on. Um, 
as we always say, Varun was like, they put their arcade games in uh, preschools, primarily, so. Uh, interestingly enough, they're, they're mostly in good shape, it's just the, their game choice was always bizarre, non-violent, I mean, I guess that's not bizarre, because you don't want a bunch of preschoolers playing Mortal Kombat, but uh, they'd get some really cool, obscure stuff while they were trying to satisfy that demographic. Castle of the Dragon, wow. Um, yeah, it looks like a real conversion. Uh, I don't know much about the game. I guess we'll see if it turns on, because that, that's the kind of stuff that gets me really excited. A wing shooting championship. These things were really cool, because they used real monitors, but this one looks like it had a long life, pretty burned. Ghost Squad, same thing, Sega Chihiro Shooter. Um, with expensive guns and not great gameplay. Need for Speed Underground stand-up. Uh, we've never put a stand-up driver in. I like stand-up drivers, and I think that they have a place, but most people don't like them as much. They like to sit down. Area 51 in a Primal Rage conversion. Our Area 51 right now in Richardson is a Primal Rage conversion, and we get a little bit of flack for it. Um, and the only reason we're still using it is after we've bought so many Area 51s, the game has worked since we put it on the floor at open. Um, and I think it was a relatively common conversion, and we don't really want to mess with it. It's, it's just so, it's been so reliable. And as soon as I say that, I gotta find some wood because it's probably breaking right now for the text. But uh, I've never seen, uh, too many of them. I mean, I've actually seen them before, but there's another one right there. Deer hunting conversion, another deer hunting. Um, these any in games just getting dumped. Uh, that's that's pretty much these. The, the bad shooters were pretty common. Hey, another Madden. Uh, I mean, you know, I've never really contemplated putting a Madden out, but I guess throughout the course of this auction, I'll have to decide if if I will. Uh, it's just I really prefer Blitz, but it's not like they're still making Blitz, so maybe. Oh, cool deluxe House of the Dead 3. Uh, we won't buy it, but I hope I hope to see it in the world somewhere. Really cool because um, it still has the same gun sensors as, as all of them, just they're outside. Um, and sometimes you get a little bit of interference with that. You want to put it in a dark room. Uh, su uh, super pack that's been multied, 60 in one with a LCD. I've seen worse LCDs in these, but I don't know if you can pick it up in the camera. But of course, the, the, the LCDs can uh, can come in like numerous varieties, but this one looks okay. But it's uh, it just doesn't have that same life, the same vibrancy as a CRT. Uh, Defender looks like they've multied it. Yeah, you've got it's a 1901, probably running the cheap 1901. You don't really see the nice stuff at auction very often. 1943 looks cool. Um, that's one of the standard uh, kits that came for 1943 in a Dynamo. Um, Monitor needs a little bit of work, but overall it looks pretty good. Multicade, uh, Killer Instinct next to it. Cool little midway cabinet. Hey, speaking of those three-player RevX, here's the uh, the really rough version. So hopefully whoever buys that one buys this one, you got plenty of parts. Another full deluxe House of Dead 3. I wonder if, uh, I mean, we could be looking at like 40, 35% of the game so far being uh, National Entertainment Network games. And now let's walk over here. We're gonna hit the cocktails really fast. Really cool as we're walking up, you can see this phone booth. I've heard some crazy numbers being thrown around that it could sell for five, six hundred dollars. Um, I don't really know what I would do with it, but some house, I'm drawn to it. There's a nostalgia just uh, with phone booths existing, so I guess we'll see how it goes. Uh, Space Invaders cocktail. All right, so this is the Space Invaders uh, 2 probably. You can see the Japanese control panel. And that right here's the actual Space Invaders 2. Um, both really cool. We actually, we've had this out at Richardson before. You've got the real color monitor instead of the overlays. Uh, really nice games. Uh, and normally don't sell for very much, so this would probably be a great home purchase if you were in the market. Uh, Robbie Roto, that was at the last auction, I think, sold for more than a thousand, so I guess that might have been a home buy. Uh, geez, I, I guess we're gonna see, because I, I love, Robbie Roto. We don't really have a good stand-up in our collection, and I don't know if we'd be able to use a cocktail, but great game, awesome game. And then right behind it's got two 60 and one uh, kind of multi-cade cocktails. Not not ours, not gonna be for us, but I, I'm as I soften in my old age, no, I still hate them. Never mind, forget all that. They're junk. You've got a centipede cabaret right there. Again. We've spoken about cabarets. We're not really gonna be able to put them out on the floor. They just don't, they're not as effective as I would hope. All right, so we're gonna go down the pinball row really quick. 
All right, we've got a stern Game of Thrones. Looks like a pro. Uh, good pin. We've got a World Cup soccer. I haven't seen turned on. That would be the you know the gym of the show. Hey, if you were we were recording yesterday, they didn't have their uh, trans light on the Shrek. It's turned Shrek right there. That was the alternate um, theme to the Family Guy pinball because the Family Guy was kind of gross. Uh, eh, neither one of them really bad games. Fishtails, one of my all-time favorites. Next to Whirlwind, Whirlwind and Fishtails generally presented together. Two of the best um, of that era, and I think Fishtails might be one of the best pinballs of all time. Uh, also, I mean, Whirlwind's great too. They're definitely uh, under love. Oh, a Capcom Pinball Magic, one of the rare Capcom releases. I imagine a lot of people are here just to play that. Um, you don't see them pop up. You'll go to the, uh, the uh, pinball show here in town and still not see one show up. Uh, eh, these Capcom games were cool. Uh, they, it, Capcom I, it was uh, in the lineage that resulted in Stern, so uh, really cool pinball, really rare. Next to a Stern Elvis. These things were selling really high for a long time. And I have a, you know, like an old affinity for Elvis, but uh, the prices on those have gone down quite a bit. Gorgar, we bought one last auction. This one looks great too. Gosh, I, I don't need one, but we'll see. Wide Body Flight 2000, kind of cool. Oh no, another Street Fighter 2. This one maybe looks better. It might be the same, I don't even know anymore. I had, I mean, it looks really great. The last one did too, so goodness, those Street Fighters are, are awesome. I know, it's changing it up. Got a jungle lord. Now this is a cool pit. Uh, it's got the multi-level play field. Lots of Williams at the time. It's got the Magna Save, and I've talked previously about how I love all these Magna Save games. Black Knight, of course, but there was a whole three, four, six. I don't even know how many with Magna Save. Uh, I love them. Uh, a time travel looks cool. Not working. Not for us, uh, but really nice. And then we got the driver's row. Not a lot on. Uh, Rush 2049, uh, next to another one. And that one's not turning on. Cruising World, that looks okay, dedicated. You know what, you might see me do something a little crazy with that, we'll see. Uh, I love the Cruising series. I think that they still play well and they've aged really great. Uh, generic, low body, Harley motorcycle, I don't know what that is. Road Burner, Off-Road Challenge, the thing that messes up all my Ivan Stewart off-road searches. Uh, Rush the Rock, great game. Doesn't look like Cintron. Cruising Exotica, one of the more sought after. Looks like the modern might be out on it. Side-by-side -side Hydro Thunders. That look like they're in okay shape, but they might have, looks like they've been hacked with LCDs, yeah. You can see how they've blacked it so it's more of a rectangle instead of the four by three. Uh, so not not good for us, not good, not good for anyone, really. Off-road Thunder with an LCD, you can see some artifacting from the LCD installation, some straight lines, and just doesn't quite have the same feel. Need for speed. Um, a gutted Gauntlet Dart Legacy pedestal. If this goes for more than a dollar, I'll be shocked. Smashing Drive, if you sell through the walkthrough. I haven't seen a Smashing Drive around in a while. That one's actually ours, so I hope it sells for a million dollars. Need for Speed Underground, also ours. I, I can't remember if that one works. Next to a, they put it next to a Carbon. Both are, they're fine games. They're kind of, they just weren't, they didn't have that same character as those 90s racers like Cruising and even Rush to Rocky or even California Speed. A super bikes, probably sell for too much. Probably came out of a CC's, Rush 2049. Two full motion <laughs> super GTs. Uh, there are gonna be a lot of people that watch this video that wish we bought them. Um, we will not, but they're cool. I mean, you've still got that factory monitor on that turning on. A Let's Go Jungle, so here's something I know about this one because we were here yesterday. They've had the art printed on like a tarp and they just screwed it in. You can see it even has like the little grommet holes. Um, so that's funny. It was totally black yesterday, but um, I don't even know how they did I mean, I guess they just had the art and printed it. I've never seen that before ever and I don't know what the purpose was, but uh, Let's Go Jungle. This is a, you know, I, I mean, geez, actually this was my the favorite game I picked in Arlington because I think it's one of the um, best American released games. I mean, it's a Sega game, but it was released natively in America. All right, then we've got, well, let's, we can, we've got a lot of air hockey dynamo. These are good air hockey tables. Uh, you won't see too many coming up for auction. They should sell in the hundreds, with, but with this many, someone might get a really good deal on what is a nice commercial uh, air hockey table. So keep an eye out for that. Sega Game Show, this is actually a, one of the better redemption games you'll see. It's, it plays like a kid's, I don't even, pachinko almost a little bit. 
second time since they're, these are two good expensive uh, redemptions. They'll probably sell too low and I shouldn't buy them so I shouldn't even talk, say nice things about them because it'll start going in my head that I want one. Skittle ball, pretty cool. Just launcher, crane game. Hey, a CC's claw game, another one. Various stages of disrepair. More claw games. Monkey Mo Panic, Double Cheese. If you watched uh, our early walkthrough, you know that these are actually our games. I bought them for the CRTs. We never got to take the Monkey Mole out, so someone might get a good deal on that. Zufari, that's like a, a one of the very last made. It's a little big, but one of the, those last monitors. Um, and it, it's gonna turn on, it works. It's just got some uh, panels missing and stuff. Ultimately, we had to give up on it. We didn't find a good use for the monitor in time and really needed the space. Uh, gold Zone, Wheel Deal, they called these a bunch of things. They are popular for a while. They were big earners for a short amount of time and, and relatively inexpensive. So if you were uh, pretty much any family entertainment center, but if you were uh, kind of a lower end family entertainment center, you'd buy a wall of these and just clean up. Deep Freeze, Barber Cut, the small version, the lights. Um, I feel like both these, the Barber Cut and the DVD thing have been in here a couple different times. A skill stop game. A uh, game where you stomp on spiders. I've never seen. Claw game. Funny ball, my all time favorite of these. Um, ghost catch. Oh, that's a cool, that's cool. I mean, I, 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 we don't buy redemption games and we, we look down on them a lot, but this is a, a pretty good redemption lineup. The LAX Extreme. This was actually, you know what? Uh, we talked on our podcast about a game we found more than like. 86 88 dollars in quarters this is what it was it was an lax extreme that we were just given found you know nearly a hundred dollars in quarters just underneath the base because let's see if we can even see any here no i don't see any but as if you look down there there's a lot of holes for the money to fall through especially if you're moving the game with the coin box still in it uh one of those i mean I, we haven't had that happen for a while, but we don't buy the same games that we used to. And we don't ever take anything for free. A uh, couple more of the... Man, you know what? This is a cool redemption lineup, I have to say. I mean, these are all various goofy skill stop games or advanced games. Um, and I don't know everything about them, but compared to some of the junk that's out there, this is pretty cool. Uh, two big choices that look nice. These might actually sell. Um, these are bets and creations that are generally, and you can see in there the jewelry um, set up, but this one's set up like a traditional claw. Uh, these might be the more any in games. They still have the bill acceptors. You know, if these sold for two or three hundred dollars, I wouldn't be too surprised. Pharaoh's Revenge. Um, it's like one of the lower end versions of like the Wizard of Oz that's made so much money for the family entertainment center as well. A real stacker, a mini. Um, I love those games. Oh, I know who brought this. So this is gonna be a weird thing. So there's a slam winner. This is a figureheads A, and at one point this exact game was in my possession, Imran. Um, so Imran and I, a uh, friend from Austin who owns uh, Arcades for Home, great guy. If you're in the area or in Texas and need games, call him up. Uh, there was an auction that had a lot of crazy uh, games on it. We, all, we set a bunch of minimum bids, and we won stuff like this. It's a figureheads. Uh, I can't remember, this uses a, a good board set, but it's a Nessica game. I, I bet this works fine, but yeah, it's um, a really cool Japanese game that it probably can't work anymore. Uh, and here's uh, probably one of those goofy, uh, I think they're Chinese or Korean made or Taiwanese. I don't know where they come from, but I see them pop up. They're really, really silly. They're supposed to be, you know, candy caps, and they are, but they're always running knockoff stuff. Uh, let's see, I think we've got a little bit more around. We've got here, we can check out the kitty rides. They exist, they sometimes sell way high. There's, so there's two markets for kitty rides and one is pe families who actually just wanted to own a kitty ride. And the second are people who have fallen in love with certain themes. And so if you ever see like the big Disney ones, the, you know, Mickey Mouse, you'll see people come spend five or $600 for a Mickey Mouse kitty ride. So those are always fun. Uh, but most of the time they'll sell for more like 25, 30, 100. Uh, and then we've got the, these gambling games. If you watched, uh, you might see some footage on these. We're gonna see where we have like a secret project we're working on. We might end up buying one. We'll see if any of them turn on or if they work at all. Um, we definitely will not be using them as a gambling game. So uh, then we have a bunch of parts. If you watch our walkthrough, the majority of these parts here are ours, overstock stuff. 
so we won't spend too much time walking through them, along with a bunch of stress tester games that should all work. Um, <laughs> they also came from our warehouse because I bought, because I was frustrated in auction a long time ago. So we'll see exactly where these prices end up. A lot of those digital FNM monitors, this will probably, uh, I bet they'll start out going $200, $300, and by the end they'll probably be going for 50 or so. Uh, we have a, a big stock of them. They're a lot harder to work with than your traditional CRT, so we definitely won't buy any more. We have plenty of them, but they are valuable if you're trying to make sure you get that CRT look on a, uh, a game that you need to restore. So uh, I think that that's the full walkthrough. Don't see too much else out here. Uh, out of breath a little bit. That was a lot of games. There's a lot more here than there was yesterday. Uh, I think we're into buying a lot of stuff too. Uh, you'll see us targeting, you know, like the Golden T for complete. Everything that was retro, of course, we're gonna target. Uh, and monitors, those 25 inch monitors, you're gonna see us going after anything that's nice. You got the Dragon's Layer 2 out there. Uh, you got these weird Japanese, Asian import games. Who knows what we're gonna end up buying. I guarantee you it's gonna be a lot though. So for now we're gonna sign off and we'll check back in as soon as the bidding starts. Thank you.